Hello, it's Valerie from Shellbrook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River, Nova Scotia. Uh, today I'm doing a video uh, making homemade soap with bear slash stoat. And this is for you, Miss Shaw. Hi. So um, what I'm using today is, um, I actually would have loved to have made it with a dark stoat, but I couldn't find any at the local uh, store. So I actually purchased this one. It was a new one they were carrying. It's incredibly black. I don't know how much you can see that. It's chocolate and pine and something else. Um, I had initially poured it in here, so you can see that there's uh, still still some of that left in there. Uh, it's very black, very bitter, <clears throat> so I'm not sure how this is going to work. <clears throat> now, when using beer and soap, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, because it's alcoholic, you don't want to put that into a container and pour your lye directly on top of anything alcoholic, whether it's wine or whatever, uh, because the reaction will definitely be volcanic and you could hurt yourself very seriously. So what you should do is try to take some of that alcohol out and there's different ways to do that. Um, you can simmer it on a stove and you have to watch that too because it does foam up real quick. You can do it in the microwave to get rid of some of that alcoholic content to make your beer flat. And um, what I did with mine was I did it in the microwave and let it set out, did it in the microwave, let it set out. And um, I'm pretty sure it's mostly flat. But when I go to pour the lye into this beer, I'm going to have it um, in a sink with ice cubes. I'm going to set the container that I'm going to mix it in, in here and add the lye slowly. I actually might show you that so that you can see how that works. So in this recipe, it's going to be a two pound batch. Uh, so I'm going to use eight ounces of the dark, the dark beer. And then I'm going to use some, uh, I don't know if you can see the color on that, but it's blueberry pomegranate kombucha along with some apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. So that's going to be my uh, lye liquid. Uh, the other thing I'm going to put in it is some mulberry silk top. That's just gorgeous. Um, the benefits of beer, somebody might say, well, why would you use beer? Why would you make a beer soap? I, because you can, for one thing, because it's nice to use different things. But uh, because beer is made with hops, hops have amino acids, and um, they're very skin-loving things. Uh, so beer actually has uh, vitamin B in it. It makes your soap, it can make your soap feel smoother like a milk does. Uh, it definitely boosts the lather and brings lather to the soap. Uh, it's great for hair, so if you're thinking about making a shampoo bar, you could add beer to it or any soap, but uh, for people that are losing hair or whatever, it's good for that. Um, it also is, uh, it fights acne and uh, it's antibacterial. Did I say it had vitamin B? Okay, so those are some good things about using beer. Um, the formula today is going to be avocado oil, castor oil, coconut oil, cocoa butter, olive oil, palm oil, shea butter, and stearic acid. And uh, it's a lovely formula, and I'm hoping it's going to work out good. So uh, I'm going to be using two ounces of coconut milk. I'm going to be adding that after the cook. The other thing I'm going to do is, I uh, just left my memory, there's going to be yogurt in it. Oh yeah, I know what it is. Could you pass me that uh, barley malt there? No, sorry honey, I have it right here. My husband's helping me today. So uh, instead of honey or maple syrup, I am adding sugar, but I'm going to add this barley malt that's been mixed um, two real heaping tablespoons of barley malt mixed with two tablespoons of aloe vera juice. And that's incredibly dark as well. And it... Uh, Smells just like malt. I really like that actually. It's a that's a nice smell It's very difficult to know what to scent this with. I'm I am going to add vanilla extract uh, Pure vanilla extract and I'm also going to add pure uh, Well, actually, I don't know if it's pure. Let me see what it says. No, no, it's butterscotch flavoring, but it's concentrated so I'm going to add some of that to it and I'm going to add a fragrance oil called goat milk and honey I'm hoping that's going to blend well with the formula. And uh, 
I know Miss Shaw wanted a rustic soap, and it's going to be a rustic soap, but I'm going to take some of the batter out um, and add some cocoa to it and some white satin mica and some gold shimmer and just plop it in and throw it in a two-pound mold. We'll see how that comes out. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, I'm going to bring you back when I pour the lye. Thank you. So here we are back. I have ice cubes in my sink. I have my pitcher, even though it's too big for the amount I have, it's good to have in case it uh, boils up. And um, if it did boil up, then I'd be able to save it because it's in that steel bowl. The other thing I want to tell you, some people freeze it and add it slowly. I am going to add it slowly and hopefully everything will be okay. So I'm just going to add a bit at a time. Uh, Mine's a bit chilly, but because I'm doing hot process, I didn't want it cold. So just a bit at a time. Make sure that you stir. It'll heat up the more you add, obviously. The thing is to have a big enough pitcher in case it does. You can have it in ice. And you can freeze your... Uh, flat beer as well, or you can freeze your beer. I'm not in the way of that, am I, honey? I think that's looking pretty good. Just pouring the rest in there. And uh, I'm just going to let that set for a minute, and uh, I'm going to shut the camera off. I will bring you back when I add it to my heated oils. I'm not going to show the entire cook from stage to stage, but once this is added, what I'll do is I'll uh, bring it to thick trace. And then I'll bring you back when it's Vaseline stage and I'm going to separate it and add the other additives. Here we are back. Um, my crock is on warm. My oil is at about 175. It's a bit higher. I'm using 2% stearic acid in this. So this is going to be a real quick cook and I think it's going to volcano pretty fast. Um, the um, Lye liquid as, is at about a 185-183. Remember to wear your safety gear. That reminds me, I don't have my glasses on. Remember to wear your safety gear and to always watch what you're doing. If you're a, if you're a, a beginner soaker, I would encourage you not to soak at such high temperatures as this in the beginning. This also is going to be a real thick batter. Uh, not to worry, it'll loosen up once I get the coconut milk in and things like that after the cook. Very dark batter and like really stinky batter. <laughs> Can you pass me that uh, little spatula there please? Thank you. Thank you. I'm just scraping this out. It's a quite foamy in there. You probably couldn't see me doing that, I apologize. But uh, so here we go. It doesn't actually look too bad. I'm just gonna burp that a bit. And uh, well, uh, I'm not sure if you can see how dark that is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. I'm just gonna stick blend this a bit. All right, it, that's a beautiful sheen on that. It's just like a melted chocolate. And uh, I'll bring you back after the cook cook's going to be real fast and uh, we'll go from there. 
I just wanted to show you how that's vol there's a big volcano happening here. So I'm going to catch it before it goes over the pot. So that's just a really good thing to do is always keep an eye on your pot. Don't take your eyes off it. And just stir it down. That's actually applesauce stage and that will go to potato stage real quick now. Okay. I wanted to bring it back and just show you this because uh, that was applesauce. Uh, when I got off camera, you can keep whisking it. I hurried it along about 20 seconds with the stick blender. Um, then I took the stick blender out and uh, it kept volcanoing. And um, now it's, it went, so uh, after that it went to potato and immediately to Vaseline. So we have Vaseline stage right now. And I'm just going to show you the next thing I add is I have my sugar with aloe vera juice, two tablespoons with about a tablespoon and a half of aloe vera juice over there. I'm going to give my crock pot a quick spray with this fine mist warm spray. Uh, I find for me it helps tremendously with having dried soap on the sides and it adds very little extra water. That's up to you, but that's something that I do to help me out. So I'm not sure if you can see in there, but it's it's really pretty dark, dark color. And I'm just going to show you uh, that I'm going to add my sugar and that super fat extra I have. So this is super fat of 5% up front with an extra 3% super fat afterwards. This is my super fat. This is apricot kernel oil. And that would be my sugar, two tablespoons of sugar and the aloe vera juice. And I just whisk, whisk that in. Ouch! Now see, that metal on that crock pot is hot because the crock is on warm, so you have to be really careful of those things as well. So I'm going to turn that off now. My crock is off, but I'm going to leave it, the adobe part, inside that electronic part to keep the heat. And I'm just going to place that over there. I always like to scrape the sides down. And uh, then I'll bring you back in about three minutes when I add the yogurt and uh, sodium lactate. So now I'm going to add my yogurt and this yogurt is at room temperature. I don't heat that up and when you add yogurt I find that it's extremely important depending on how hot your batter is and your crock is you want to make sure that you stir that up real well before you add anything else. I have found there's different ways to add your yogurt and your sodium lactate for me personally, I have found that this has worked the best for manageability in my batter. But please, you try it. Uh, formulas play a big part in your batter, and and then I'm going to eat it. Uh, eat it. I'm not going to eat it, but I'm going to add my heated sodium lactate, and um, this is five percent of the total oils. So it's one point six ounces. It's uh, sodium lactate is incredible for your skin. It's a great moisturizer, great for aging skin like mine, but it also is a great aid in hardening your soap. And I try to add everything heated if I can. And that would depend on what it is, of course, too. Now that's still quite thick. I'm actually surprised it how well it's behaving there. But um, the next thing I'm going to add is my coconut milk. I have everything over here in a frying pan heating up because I like to add everything hot if I can. 
And it also keeps, uh, I set my colors over there and my mold and uh, things that I just I don't want cold going into my batter. So this is my heated coconut milk and it would be the two ounces that I held out. Coconut milk or milks I find, uh, if the bottom of your crock is extremely hot and heat is on the electric part, you can actually end up cooking your milk if you don't get that stirred up right away. And I've had that experience. So I'm very careful of that now. Because I spent a lot of time picking cooked milk out of my batter. And... Uh, this doesn't look like it's going to be a real loose batter, but that's fine too. The main thing for me when making soap is to make it so that it's good for the skin. And for me, that would be non-drying. I'm just going to go over and get my barley malt. This barley malt uh, I had sitting in hot water in a fry pan. This batter is going to be a dark one. And for Miss Shaw, I'm not coloring the batter. I'm just going to color the accent that I'm putting in it. This malt will add a scent to the soap as well, but it's for me it would be a ple very pleasant scent. The other thing I wanted to tell you was after it was Vaseline stage, I checked the pH on this and there was no lye left in it. And I also, what I decided on to add to this for a scent was the goat milk and honey fragrance oil, butterscotch flavoring, and vanilla extract. I think this is going to be a lovely smell together. I think it's going to complement that beer soap. Now that vanilla extract I have found with pure extracts have ended up making the soap very fluid. And uh, that's working here right now pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut that camera off and let this set just about a minute. And then I'm going to come back and separate it and do the design. Here we are back and I'm going to just take that adobe part out and finish up this soap. So there we are. It's beautiful. I'm so happy with this. I'm happy with this scent I used. It really complements that batter. And I'm going to pour some in here. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can see that. I'm going to see what this pours like. Hopefully you can see that coming out. Yeah, quite lovely. Very, very manageable. And the silk has given it a lovely, lovely shine on that. Might have used a bit too much accent in that, maybe. Take some of that out. This is just going to be a rustic look for Miss Shaw. And uh, it's not going to be a, it's going to be an in the pot swirl and then just pour it into the, into the mold. Okay, that's my cocoa going in there. I'm going to add just a tiny bit, probably, I would say, three quarters of a teaspoon of hot water to that and that's cocoa and uh, I'm going to add this white satin mica and gold shimmer which are from Stephanie's Stephanie Graham's mica and more and I might just add a tiny bit hot water to that as well. I don't know if this will 
change the color on this too much, but hopefully it'll give it enough to give it an accent. And maybe the gold shimmer will even be a bit sparkly. Actually, that's a really beautiful color. Oh, that is lovely. That smells so lovely. So these cups that I have here were filled with scalding hot water as well. So that when I pour the hot batter into these cups, they do not get a shock. And cocoa certainly doesn't make a batter looser. I'll tell you that. I don't even know if you'll see the accent in that, but I'm trying to get away from one-time plastic, so I'm using these little shower cap type things that Laura Elliott sent me. Lovely lady just sent me those. She's a sweetheart. Okay, so here we are, and uh, I'm just going to stir this up a little bit, and I'm going to spray it because that is real thick. Actually, you might put a couple of teaspoons of hot water in that, maybe. Can get it here. And don't panic uh, over adding two teaspoons of water to your batter. Uh, when you're using 5% lactate, and if you have good numbers anyway, for to me, good numbers would be different than somebody else's, maybe. Okay, here we go. I guess you can see that, and I'm just gonna pour from high up. That's pretty good. I'll save some of that to put on top of the soap, I think. I'm thinking that would look nice. Can you smell that, honey? My honey says it smells pretty wonderful, so that's a good thing. Okay, here we go again. This is thicker. You pass me that two pound. Oh, perfect. My husband has it right ready for me. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just gonna go around and just pick up some. I'm not gonna do a lot, and I'll probably just pick that up and pour that in. See how it goes. Not sure if you're gonna be able to see me there. Okay, hopefully you can. Just going to take the opportunity to beat that down a bit. I'm truly liking those colors. Let's see if I can lift that up. And uh, the fine mist spray for me is fantastic for doing hot process. So you see how very little spray that you need. And 
It just seems to do the world a good. Okay, voila. I'll show you how that lathers up and uh, I'll show you the cut. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye. This is the puck from that beer soap. Uh, I don't know if you can see the colors in there, but hopefully when it dries there will be a contrast. And I just wanted to check the leather on, lather on that. Uh, it smells, oh my, it, it smells incredibly wonderful. I just, and I can still smell uh, the barley malt, which uh, I think truly, truly adds to that. So this is uh, lathering up, very silky, uh, feels smooth. I'm hoping I'll get some uh, lather out of that. It does have a slight off color there right now, but that makes perfect sense with the cocoa in there. That is so lovely. I am happy with that, actually, because when I smelled the bear, it had a bad smell. But, uh, oh, that is so lush. That is my puck. Nobody's getting that one. But you can actually see how dense that is. And I'll show you the cut.